kind of non-equilibrium dynamics calculation. Again, without any fitting, we get the same uh, uh, result as in experiments. Because even though there are no interactions between electrons, we still have power principle, which is important in dynamics. When you photo excite an electron, you photo excite an electron with a certain speed. So when, and then you have to refill the cycle. You photo excite an electron, it's, it's bound to a pole, right? And so it's very difficult to actually, in the next electron, to come in and displace it. So you, for the non-spin flip, you have to add extra energy to sort of push that electron away. That's why the non-spin flip shows up at high energy, whereas uh, there is no power principle for the opposite spin, uh, and that's why the signal is at low energy. So again, something that looks puzzling becomes very natural when we think about dynamical process. Uh, another fact, again, which we're very used to, in traditional uh, interpretation of X-ray as response function, nothing should depend on incoming photon energy. Everything is determined by the energy transfer. Whereas in this case, you know, when we think about this dynamical process, depending on the incoming photon energy, you photo excite electron to different states, so the phase space available for scattering changes, so, and that's what, uh, how the signal changes. So again, this is a signal as a function of energy transfer, but for different incoming photon energy. So that's, again, something very unusual uh, for, uh, for traditional X-ray. And in fact, precisely this uh, feature uh, has been seen uh, uh, against, uh, in, in experiments. Uh, so uh, you can see that this is the position of the peak changes for different incoming uh, photon energies uh, consistently with this uh, theoretical uh, prediction. OK, with this, let me uh, conclude. Uh, I hope I showed you that we have uh, some very common uh, themes and uh, we can use common tools uh, for exploring uh, solid state systems uh, and ultra cold atoms. And I chose my examples as uh, interferometric probes or studies which relate to non equilibrium dynamics, and there are many more. Thank you. So, so for this, uh, yeah, for this state that you say you find this topological polarity, polaroid that you call yes. you find this uh, impurity to yes. the uh, fractional hole effect that was so, so it was a part in the fractional hole. So, the, do you have reduced that you would find one particle to uh, two particles and in principle, we, uh, in principle yes, you can imagine that if you make it. Let's say an unlocal interaction, it combines two uh, particles. But we only consider kind of point scattering, right, for an impurity. And when you have point scattering, that's already in a, you know, a single quasi particle, right, already gives you this kind of, you know, this gestural factor, which makes sure that now the host particles do not overlap with an impurity atom. So for contact interaction, it doesn't make any sense to find more than one quasi particle. But for more than local interaction, yes, in principle, you can buy more than one positive particle. Next question. Yes. Yeah, I have a question about non equilibrium dynamics. And you say that uh, the dynamics with uh, impurity, and another one is uh, with, uh, without impurity. So you compare two wave, fun two wave functions, yes. how different is uh, between two wave dynamic wave functions. So, so, so your result shows that uh, in short time, and the, the two dynamic wave functions should be, you know, of, of similar, quite similar, but in long time it's quite different. It's something like that, isn't it? Sure, well, you see, but we're not comparing ground states. We start with the same wave function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one of, like, the one with impurity, it just involves with a different Hamiltonian. So as time progresses, it changes. The yeah. one without impurity just evolves. It's still an eigenstate of the same Hamiltonian. It doesn't change at all. Whereas the other one begins to evolve, so as a result, yeah, the overlap obviously decreases. Yeah. Yeah, uh, now, uh, the final question is uh, the impurity is uh, in induced uh, the, the interaction different, yeah, right? Is, is the impurity induced the interaction different? Is well, that or uh, tenant different? So, what have, impurity can have different hyperfine states. Oh? And depending on the hyperfine state of an impurity, interaction with the Fermi gas can be very different. So, in this case, in fact, uh, this kind of spin up state of impurity has a flashback resonance with chromions. So, okay. they were able to tune it from very weak. To very strong positive, very strong negative, back to zero. I see. Okay, thank you. Has we begin to study the effect of, I mean, what happens when you sort of make this uh, impurity less confined? It's, it's so, in this case, they are not even confined, they just have it. 
Uh, I see what we did. We closed our eyes and we assume that they are not just heavy. We assume that they are infinitely heavy. Yeah. In reality, they are just a factor of seven. But the, uh -huh. even though nobody studied it quantitatively, the belief is that your thermal, as long as your thermal smearing is larger than recoil energy, which is k uh -huh. for me divided by the mass of the impurity, the finite mass should not matter. Yeah, because there is a, there is a, there is a, paper, a lot of paper by, by Nozier as well. He actually studied this story and claimed that in two or three dimensions there shouldn't be any of At the level of general, yes, understanding, yes. It's, but I don't think he, we don't have quantitative theory to compare it. Right? Rather, it's arguments. So at zero temperature, you're right. An LT catastrophe should die out. But you can ask at which frequencies, at which time scale. And the time scale is precisely this recoil energy. And so, in some sense, fortunately for us, uh, this was a high temperature experiment when they, they're just beginning to enter the regime okay. when uh, ripple energy becomes important. So interestingly, when they pull their samples more, our theory should stop working. Uh, and does the theory include the effect of the trap, the overall trap for the... No, so actually, what, again, what's useful in this experiment is that you see, uh, fermions are somewhere in the center, uh, sorry, impurities are all in the center of the trap, they are bosonic uh -huh. particles. So the, Creating homogeneity in the density of chromium is very minimal. They're mostly seen just the center of the trap. Okay. I, I have a very uh, different question. I'm just very curious how did you find this kind of problem or the similarity between the elementary system and the cold atoms? Although you work in both, but I think it's still very difficult to find the connection between them. Is there any special reason or just something? Well, I guess, uh, like say, in the case of dynamics, I was quite, I was thinking about resonant X-ray, but okay. first I would try, let's say, to solve. Oh, you don't know that, you don't like uh, Well, I, I went to a talk, so. Oh, uh, went to a talk, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, they, you know, they, I, like, in case of X-ray, I think I was just really frustrated when people tried, oh, most of the explanation are either hand waving or some very heavy numerical, which you just don't understand. Okay. So it's just, oh, we take a cluster, we do these calculations. Just believe me, that's the answer we can fit the experiments. Okay. Uh, and then, in some sense, we learned this tool of functional determinant okay. for non equilibrium dynamics and realized we can apply it to both systems. Okay, okay great. Okay, let's thank uh, uh, Eugene. Yeah. So our next speaker is. Uh, Professor Jorosh of Nikol. Yeah. Here? Yes.